Bonjour les amis Bonjour, bienvenue à Paris We are place de la Bastille On a pretty rainy and soggy January Sunday. Bonjour, bienvenue. Here's another live stream strolled with your friend Vero, a Paris based tour guide who shares Paris and La Belle France with you throughout the week on social media and once in a while in uh, live stream strolls like this one. I am standing outside a big building that you may know. We will see it better from down below. Uh, for now, if somebody could confirm the sound is good for you, that'd be great. This is one of the loudest areas in Paris. And I want to make sure you can hear me before I start talking <laughs> and taking you on our little tour today. Bonjour, Félix. Bonjour, les amis. I'm going to show you where I am. Do you recognize this building? Very modern. 200 people are ready. Time to get started. Bonjour. Vero. <laughs> With a face mask on, but no glasses because they're too fogged up. So I'm going to do my best without glasses. <laughs> Good thing I know my way around in Paris. It'll help sound is great thank you for confirming that so i hope you're ready for uh, some exploration of this uh, iconic place in paris la place de la bastille and uh, the bastille is a name that means a lot to a lot of people around the world actually so we're going to talk about that today there's a lot of history to discover i was originally going to take you to le marais after this but i don't think i will do that today because uh, there are quite a few stories to tell and things to show you here. So what I thought I would do is take you to the Marais next weekend if you'd like to join me for a little bit of a special tour. Does that sound good for everyone? Okay, so let's show you now the sights. Now that you've seen my hat, I'm really bundled up. Okay, that is the white hat, that's right. 229 of you already that's wonderful thank you for joining me on a sunday i know it's a little early for the west coast but the reason i start early now is because we have a curfew a 6 p.m curfew and it's now 4 p.m in france and i need time to get back to my place afterwards i live on the other side of town so i cannot start at 5 p.m for the next couple of months well until they change the rules at least so i will start going down the stairs and take you that's part of the joys of live streaming with rain, wind, snow. And they, and they expect to see the Bastille, but the Bastille is gone. And for decades and decades, this has been a crazy square, a square with a lot of All right. Well, hopefully you can get back on. I checked cell signal earlier and it was fine, but now it's not fine. <laughs> Do I love this? The people who have followed me for a while know I just love this. If your screen is frozen, try logging, out, logging off and then coming back in. It should be fine. I see a lot of you are back. So I was going to walk you around that section but it looks like cell coverage is uh, subpar over there, so I'm not going to do that. But I think you get the picture here. You can see, this is where the cars used to go around basically, right? And right now, it's pedestrian friendly, magically. After two years of work, that drove les riverains, locals, completely crazy. There was increased traffic, noise, but it was worth it because today is a rainy day, it's winter, but picture this place in the summer, it's gonna be quite lovely. And there are a few surprises I want to show you. And 
you will see how different it looks. 245 of you back. Thank you for sticking with it. Don't give up. If we have cell coverage issues, I won't give up if you don't. So, <laughs> okay, the Bastille. We need to say a few words about the Bastille because it's such a big word around the world. And everybody thinks immediately of the event that triggered the French Revolution on July 14, 1789. But well before that, in the 14th century, a French king was trying to protect the eastern section of Paris. And like many kings before him, he uh, built a wall. And that wall was meant to protect that section of Paris over there. There was a big gate, La Porte Saint Antoine. And that's how it all started. And then it became a, a, a fortress, really, a medieval fortress that had eight towers. It was massive and it would have stood right here in this section. Eight towers. Now, it's hard to imagine what it was like, I realize. But if you want to look at the column here, which I will talk about soon, the height of the walls of the fortress would have been about half the size of that column. So it was pretty massive. And those eight towers had different names. And at that time, the fortress, like I said, was used for defensive purposes. But then in the 17th century, we had a French king named Louis XIII and his uh, wingman was a very powerful man named the Cardinal of Richelieu, a man of the church, but also a very powerful statesman. He turned the Bastille into a state prison. And from that day forward, the Bastille became a symbol of arbitrary power during the Ancien Regime, which is that time roughly between the Renaissance in the 16th century and the French Revolution of 1789. Why? Because a French king from the 17th century on could just sign a document called une lettre de cachet, so we would say a sealed or closed letter with the seal of the king on it. And if your name was in that letter, you would be shipped to La Bastille very discreetly at night, never to be seen again, if you were unlucky. There was no way to appeal, there was no judgment, and you would just be in prison, in the jail here in La Bastille, in what used to be right around here. Now, of course, if you were part of the nobility, you might have a very comfortable, more comfortable living conditions you might have people serving you, you might have decent food, a heated place. But if you weren't, you'd be down below and there were cells and they were damp and small and dark. And some people would never make it out of their life. Uh, Voltaire, the famous writer, Voltaire was in prison here twice. You know, he was, today we would say he was a big mouth. <laughs> so he was in jail in La Bastille twice. And then there were legends. Remember the legend of the man in the iron mask? It's been treated in stories, of course, and in movies as well. So famous prisoners, not so famous prisoners, but that was La Bastille. Now the irony is by the 18th century, the century of the French Revolution, La Bastille was not really used anymore. In fact, Louis XVI, who lived in Versailles like his predecessors, didn't really want to use La Bastille. It was a very costly place to run. There was staff, as we would say. There was a governor who reported to the king and his troops. There were people cooking. There were people treating patients if they were sick. There was a priest. So it was just too costly. And Louis XVI was trying to save money. He needed money for other projects. So the irony is when the people of Paris finally stormed the Bastille on July 14, 1789. They were looking for powder for their guns because over the centuries it had been used to store like an arsenal, to store powder and weapons. They came here to find powder for their guns and they found six or seven prisoners here. And things, you know, took a turn for the worse. And you know what happened? That was what triggered the French Revolution. People don't realize that the French Revolution, they didn't walk 
straight on to Versailles. That happened months later in October when the women of Paris who were starving marched to Versailles to demand food from the king. So symbolically, the storming of the Bastille started it all. And what happened to it afterwards? Well, afterwards, and while I'm talking about all this, I'm showing you the site so you can enjoy this new space and I will tell you what they've tried to do here afterwards. So once the Bastille was uh, taken, it was uh, taken down pretty quickly. It took about two or three years and the stones from the Bastille were used to erect other buildings in Paris, including a bridge, the Bridge de la Concorde, Le Pont de la Concorde, which links the French National Assembly and the Place de la Concorde, where the obelisk is. So they recycled the Bastille, you might say. And they had a very entrepreneurial gentleman there. I forgot his name now. And this gentleman decided to reuse some of the debris from the Bastille and built models of the Bastille as a souvenir, you might say. And he shipped it to the main cities of each of the new départements, the administrative divisions all over France that the revolution had created. So for many years, you could find models of the Bastille all over France, and some of them have survived. In fact, I was reminded today by a France with Vero uh, follower, Jennifer. She sent me a picture of the main key to the Bastille and one of these models that sits in the United States at Mount Vernon, the former home of George Washington, President Washington. It was a gift from Lafayette. It was a gift from Lafayette. And you can see that model there in Mount Vernon. If you can travel internationally from there, you have a little piece of La Bastille right there in the United States. And he was very entrepreneurial indeed. He became part of the team of architects and people who worked on tearing down La Bastille afterwards. And um, yeah, he proved quite entrepreneurial. I guess entrepreneur is a French word after all, huh? So what happens after that? Well, after that, in the 19th century, there was a statue in the middle here. There was a fountain for a while. And then came, out of the revolution, came Napoleon, the first empire. And Napoleon decided he wanted a fountain, a better fountain in the middle. And his plans were for the fountain to represent an animal, an elephant, a life-size elephant. And they made a cast out of plaster to try and see what it would look like here in the middle of the square. And so the elephant sat there for many years, but because of Waterloo and Napoleon disappearing eventually, and the kings returned, the elephant was never built, the bronze elephant they had in mind. But that model made of plaster, you can still look up online and see. And Victor Hugo mentioned it in Les Miserables. Remember in the story Les Mis, you have uh, the young boy Gavroche who lives on the streets and he hides inside the elephant, which is in very bad shape. So eventually that elephant takes, you know, is taken down. And after the first empire, the restoration where we have two more kings, there's another revolution in 1830, the three glorious days of July 1830. And one last king comes to power from a different branch of French royalty. His name is Louis Philippe. And he will rule the citizen king, they call them. He will rule from 1830 to 1848. And he is the one who decides to have a column right here in the middle of the square where the elephant roughly used to be. In fact, you don't see behind this fence, they're still working on it, but the, um, the place where the elephant used to stand is still there and they've used it for the column. So Louis Philippe and his July monarchy, they called it, decides to do this column to honor liberty and the people who fought during the 1830 revolution, the second revolution. And in fact, some of these people are buried in the crypt below the column, believe it or not. Now, ironically, what he didn't know is that eventually he would be brought down by another revolution himself, the third one in 1848. But the column stead, stayed, sorry. And on the top of it, 
you have this beautiful golden statue called Le Génie de la Liberté, Liberty Genius. It's um, an angel holding a torch in his right hand and broken chains in the left. And he represents freedom, the power of the people. And it's been there since. So this is the story very quickly of the Bastille. Now, what is left of the Bastille today? A few things. There is a square in that direction over there, close to the Seine River, Le Square Galli, not a square, I should say a garden, Le Square Galli, where you can see the foundations of one of the eight towers. And they found it when they excavated the Metropolitan, the Metro, in 1899, right before it was inaugurated in 1900, and they moved those stones over there. And then here and there, you have a plaque reminded you, reminding you of what the Bastille used to be. Below ground in the metro, if you take line five, we have several lines connecting below our feet at the Bastille. It's a major hub. Below at line five, you can see some of the stones from the original wall of the Bastille. So there are places where you can picture it. And like I said, those models that are still around France, as well as the Musée Carnavalet when it finally reopens in the Marais. Um, but if you want a tip, the best way to imagine the size of the Bastille, the medieval fortress, is to hop on Metro Line 1 to go all the way out to the end of Line 1 at Château de Vincennes. Vincennes is a lovely city where I used to live until very recently. And there is a beautiful medieval chateau there. And if you stand outside the walls, right by the dungeon, the dungeon was built at about the same time they added the towers to the Bastille. And if you really want to get a feel for the size of the Bastille at the time, just go to Vincennes and stand outside the dungeon, and then you will understand. So that's my little tip for you. So now that we've talked about history and the past, you know I like to make my connections with the present as well. Today, January 2021, on a very cloudy day, and it's kind of windy, I hope the sound doesn't bother you too much, we are here, brand new space. And the formerly crazy square with traffic going all around it has just been reintroduced to Parisians who actually participated uh, a few years ago, they sat down with the city of Paris and told them what they'd like the square to be. So it was nice because it was there was a consultation of locals. And what they've tried to do here on this new square in La Bastille is to give it back to pedestrians. They want it to be pedestrian friendly and also to cyclists. Uh, you, you probably know there are more and more bike lanes in Paris and more and more people are biking. But if you remember biking around here, it's going to be a very different experience now. Um, you have a bike lane that goes both ways, that goes all, all the way around this. So that makes it really easy to connect to other sections of the neighborhood. You have trees. They've planted a lot of trees, about 50. Those skinny little things <laughs> hopefully are going to grow into something. Even by summertime, you can see how new this is. They haven't had time to hook up everything. So lots of trees and then they've added places to sit. See those benches and those chairs? And you have them back there too. So they want this place to be a place where Parisians and visitors can come and relax and sit and read and maybe ride a, ride a bike. They also want it to be accessible. Paris is one of the least accessible cities in Europe and um, they really wanted to improve things for people who have, you know, who are in wheelchairs, etc. So they are still working on that part and I think it's going to be really nice. Now, if you tried crossing the street over there, you'd still need to watch it like everywhere else in Paris these days. You can still see crazy traffic. I mean, the cars have to go somewhere after all, since they can't come here anymore. And bikes seem to come from all sides. So you'll have to be very careful at first when you come here. You need uh, eyes behind your head, you know? 
So I'm just strolling as I talk to show you the place so you can all enjoy it because I knew some of you were following the construction and wondering what it was going to turn into. So next week I'll take you to the Marais next weekend and uh, we will probably in fact start our walk uh, right there, Rue Saint-Antoine. Now I want to show you that they haven't forgotten the historic heritage around here and all this new paving here has uh, traces of exactly the stories I've just told you about the Bastille. You have um, ceramic tiles, I don't know that they're ceramic but they're tiles, I hope for them they're not ceramic, they're sturdy and that. I'm not sure this guy is supposed to be here. <laughs> uh, you have tiles commemorating the dates I just mentioned. Here is the revolution of 1830 that uh, brought down the restoration and the two brothers of Louis the 16th who had taken over. And then what else do you have? I'm walking around. You have here another tile representing the elephant, the fountain that Napoleon I had imagined water from the Seine was going to spurt out of its trunk. It would have been magnificent. And there's a reason he thought about that. Um, and I will mention it in a second. It's linked to the canal that's close by. What else do we have? Here we have this uh, representation of the original Bastille fortress. The eight towers, you can't really see it and how it stands right at the foot of the July column. So again, they're paying respects to the historic heritage. It hasn't been forgotten. Even if the Bastille is now a known site, the history is still here. And here's a cool one here. Let's see. And they kind of repeat themselves on the, on the plaza. The plaza is built like a peninsula, really. Do you uh, recognize this one? This was also very important during the French Revolution. It's called the Frisian cap, le bonnet Frisian. And ever since antiquity, the antiquity, uh, it's represented freedom to a lot of people in Europe and around the world. And during the French Revolution, uh, revolutionaries would wear this. It stands for freedom. So you see, it's kind of a floppy little hat and the tip kind of droops in the in the front and um, you'll see it a lot on la marianne the marianne this woman who represents the french republic on statues on but on busts um, that you have in all the french city halls sometimes it's red and all of these styles i'm showing you have been made by a prestigious institution in paris called la manufacture de sèvres one of these big maisons where crafts were developed in the 17th and early 18th century and la manufacture de sèvres specialized in porcelain and ceramics and it was created under louis the 15th the sun king's great grandson his mistress uh, was really into uh, beautiful things and the arts and she protected them and uh, they have asked them to do those styles, which is nice. So you have all this when you come here, as soon as you can return. I hope for you the weather then is better than it is today. <laughs> that would make a big difference, wouldn't it? The places where you can sit. You have public restrooms over there, which is always nice, especially right now. We have no cafes, no restaurants. They have been closed, bless them, since October. And the rumor has it they will not reopen until Easter, which is absolutely dreadful for them. A lot of them will go under and may never make it back. Now, present day, the Bastille Square, present day. I'm glad you like the history. It's fascinating. There's a lot to tell here. I'm just giving you the short version. <laughs> here is the uh, Bastille, the Opéra Bastille, huh? the second opera house in Paris. You know, the one, the Opéra Garnier, the beautiful one 
Well, this one is a lot newer. It was inaugurated in the 1980s during the, President, the Mitterrand presidency. Do you know what used to stand here? From the mid 19th century to about 1969, there was a train station. It was called La Gare de la Bastille. It was even called La Gare de Vincennes. And there was a, a train line that took Parisians all the way to the eastern outskirts, to Vincennes, and then past Vincennes to the beautiful Val de Marne along the Marne River, places like Nogent-sur-Marne, for example. Now, if you followed me this summer, you may remember on a Sunday, I took you on my pretty blue bike to the outskirts there. And we had a really nice time by the Marne River. And this is what this train line used to do. And eventually it stopped operating in the 60s. And by the early 90s, they had taken down the train station and built the opera instead. So this was really part of all the new um, all the new construction sites, all the new sites that President Mitterrand uh, commissioned or sponsored during the 40 years that he was at the head of France. This was one of them. So this is the new Bastille today. You have the Opera House where, where an old train station used to be, taking Parisians to the Burbs for a fun weekend, or taking workers from the Burbs to Paris to work. You have this uh, July column, that was erected in the 19th century and has been there since. And that is what I, I'm, I'm always picturing people who travel to Paris for the first time and <laughs> they, uh, and they, uh, it's just silly. It's, uh, they're probably looking for the Bastille and they can't find it. This is what they see and they're probably like, where is the Bastille? Well, I've told you where to find sections of it. Things to do nearby, you could head to Le Marais in that direction, which is a lovely neighborhood. That's what we will do next weekend. Or on a pretty day, I would really recommend waiting for a pretty day. You could follow this uh, street over here that takes you to the train station La Gare de Lyon. But before you get there, you would reach a beautiful elevated walkway known as La Promenade de Planté when it was inaugurated in the early 90s. It's now called La Coulée Verte, and it's the one that inspired uh, the High Line in New York City. And it's linked to that train station I was just mentioning, since the train station is gone, but the line used to go to Eastern Paris. And today you can almost follow the same uh, route. Uh, if you follow this uh, walkway that's partly elevated above the viaduct of the arts, and you stand at the same level as roof lines in several rooftops in some sections. And then you finally reach the outskirts of Paris and the beltway that goes around Paris. And if you go under it, you reach Saint-Landé and the beautiful Bois de Vincennes. So this is a really nice walk, something fun to do. It's a lot more, a lot busier now than it was when it opened when I lived here in Paris, but it's still worth doing. So remember, it's in this direction and it's called La Promenade de Planté or La Coulée Verte. So this is the new Paris, where the Bastille, the fortress, the symbol of absolute power that had to be taken down at all costs, stood once. And we haven't forgotten, we haven't forgotten the Bastille, nobody has. And they're making sure we won't with those tiles on the ground, though I wonder how many people will actually see them and know what they represent all these dates. That would be a good place to test your kids and see how much they know about French history, actually. All right, so about to show you now the next section of this new space. The wind is picking up a little. This is brand new, my friends. You haven't seen this yet. Look at the beautiful stone masonry, la pierre de taille this sculpted stone that's so uh, popular on Paris facades. And this is brand new. What they wanted to do is to create a better access to a port that's down there, Le Port de l'Arsenal. It used to be a commercial port, a very busy one, in fact, for a long time. But in the 80s, when they opened the Opera House, it became a leisure port. And so you have boats for people who live there year round. And they created those stairs as part of the new Esplanade or Plaza or Peninsula, whatever you want to call it. 
so people could go down easily. I hope connection is not going to fail me, but if it does, I'll keep filming, so don't go anywhere, please. <laughs> Trying to show you the stairs. Voila. Now, what you see here, if you've uh, ridden the metro, metro line one, and you've waited for the metro either going east to Vincennes or west towards La Défense, um, you can actually see through this from the inside. And you've looked at the port that sits below. So we are walking right under the metro right now. And for the story to be complete, we need to talk about water. There's a reason good old Napoleon, Napoleon I, wanted a fountain in the middle of that square to honor French people, to honor his military victories, but also to remind people of the fact that he had been the one who had commissioned the Canal Saint-Martin and all the other canals in Paris. You've probably heard that once you've done the Seine River tours, there is a fun thing to do in Paris, which is to do a boat ride on the Canal Saint-Martin. You hear the metro? It's right above our heads. That's cool. This is the entrance of the Canal Saint-Martin. This is where it starts or this is where it ends, depending on how you look at it. And it goes underground for about a mile, a little over a mile, and then it comes back out and goes all the way to the northern outskirts of Paris to La Villette, where the former uh, slaughterhouses used to be. And it's a very fun ride. It's very slow and mellow and you go through locks. Some of them are manually operated, which is quite fun. And you can catch the boats in the northern section of Paris in La Villette, or you can catch them here. So you can go in either direction. I will show you the boats. Of course, the poor things have been grounded. So this is all new. They have enlarged the case so people can stroll here. They have really made it better. And you can see the stairs we just came down from these stairs on a summer day when it's really hot because it does get hot in Paris it's nice to do that uh, canal boat ride because you can um, you see when you go under there it's really shady um, even a little damp and it does feel good so like I said this has been a leisure port since the 1980s so you have people who live here year-round stay here year-round they're about i think it's around 200 something slips and they have pretty strict rules i know they're supposed to move the boats once in a while and to go away for a few days especially at peak time in the summer i don't know the rules exactly but there are some rules here so this is the newer section all of that is pretty new And like I said, Napoleon was no fool indeed because he, the fountain would have been a connection with the canal. He was quite proud of that because by digging those canals in the early 19th century during the first empire, he never saw them completed. They took 20 years to build, but it was a way to bring finally uh, potable uh, water Parisians could drink as well as uh, to all the fountains in Paris, as well as uh, merchandise. So those canals have played a significant part in Parisian life, especially in the 19th century. If you go to the Canal Saint-Martin area in the 10th arrondissement, lots of bars, people hanging out at night. But it's also interesting to picture the area in the 19th century with industrialization. There were factories and warehouses on both sides. Now most of them are gone, of course. But the canal, Canal Saint-Martin, and the other two, Canal de Lourdes, Canal Saint-Denis, they were really essential in bringing the merchandise to, uh, to the heart of Paris. But really the reason that canal was uh, dug out too was to connect Le Bassin de la Villette in the northeastern section of Paris to the Seine River. 
Yep, it was to bring them water. If you follow, you see I told you the Canal Saint-Martin ends here, but if you follow Le Pont de Le Port de l'Arsenal to, to the end here, there are a couple of little bridges. You reach a lock because the canal is slightly higher than the Seine. And as you go through the lock, you finally reach the Seine. So what they did is they connected the canals to the Seine River and it all goes through here. So this is a pretty significant place. It wouldn't be Paris if we didn't have our cobblestones where we can sprain our ankles at will. Always wear comfortable shoes in Paris. Don't do what influencers do. They only walk for 30 seconds until they're done filming and then they switch shoes too. I'm saying that because I've seen them do it. <laughs> so this is where the Canal Saint-Martin ends. You can see the beautiful July column in the background with the Liberty Genius, the statue on top of it. To the right is the beautiful Opéra Bastille, the modern opera house in Paris. That's where we came from. I don't know how cold it is, but my fingers are pretty numb. It's probably about four Celsius tops. What is that, 37? It's just damp. What train is here? The, the sounds you heard was the, the metro. Metro line one, in fact, you see? From here, you'll understand. When you stand on the quay, in Metro Line 1, whether you're going to La Défense or Vincennes in that direction, you usually stand there. In fact, you can see the Metro right now and you can look down at the port. So it's the Metro you see. You see? About 36 degrees. Thanks, Larry. It feels colder. <laughs> ah, here are the boats. Poor boats. They've been stranded since since this summer, I guess, since last summer. This is Canorama. <clears throat> there are a couple of companies <clears throat> that do the canal cruises. And uh, this is the big one. So if you did the canal tour, you would come here. If you decide to start on this side, I like to start on this side. And then uh, board one of these. And if you want a tip, Try and sit at the front. This one doesn't make it very easy, but some of them are smaller. Always sit at the front if you can, because that's when you see the locks. When you go through the locks, that's where the action is, because some of them are manually operated. So sit as close as you can to the front. Let's see the other boat if it lets you do that, or if maybe they've changed them. Yeah, because you can't really sit here. Oh, that one does. See that one? That would be a good spot to sit because you would be able to see the locks as they come on you come upon you or you come upon them. It's hard for me to read your comments as always. I'm not wearing my glasses, but I will read them afterwards. And if there are questions, I will answer them as best I can. I can only catch a few as they go by. 330 people and more. This is amazing. Thank you so much for keeping me company on this chilly Paris day. So when they, when they turned the port into a leisure port, they also built in the 80s, they also built beautiful gardens, Les Jardins de l'Arsenal. Arsenal, Arsenal, because there was, uh, you know, there were guns and powder at the Bastille and also stored near the port here. That's why it's been named Arsenal. So these gardens pretty much, you see people getting together because there are no cafes or restaurants, so they they make it work somehow. You've never seen so many Parisians do to-go coffee or to-go this and to-go that. They've turned into Americans overnight. When in Rome, do as Americans. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. So as you know, I've been doing this now since April last year when all my tour assignments disappeared. And I am now a virtual tour guide and uh, it's a business for me. This is how I pay the bills and I love what I do. But to keep going and offer free content on social media, I really need the support of um, my club members. 
And I encourage you to look up the club, the Friends with Vero Club on Patreon at patreon.com slash French Girl in Seattle. That will be mentioned in the video notes later. Because I have about, how many fun people do we have in that group now? 460 or so? And uh, not only do they help me and support the business and enable all of you to enjoy those uh, free events like live strolls, but they also get rewards. So they get treated to exclusive live events and uh, stories and videos that other people don't see. So consider joining the club. It's really affordable. If you are a Francophile and if you love Paris and France, you will not regret it, guaranteed. Most of the people who joined in fact last year are still with me and the numbers are growing each month. And uh, this is my chance to welcome our new club members who joined this week. Two days ago, I live streamed from the Loire Valley in the beautiful city of Tours with an impromptu stroll. And I took you through a beautiful garden and I had people join after that. So welcome, bienvenue les amis. Thank you for your support. So the garden I was talking about, Le Jardin de l'Arsenal, like most gardens, doesn't look like much in the winter, poor thing. But you can picture it in the spring. Sunshine for the Marais walk, huh? I wouldn't hold my breath, my friend. This is January in Paris, <laughs> which as far as I'm concerned is like January in Seattle, where I lived, as you know, for more than two decades, <laughs> keeping my expectations low so I can be pleasantly surprised. So let's see, what time is it now? It's almost, oh yeah, we've been going for a while. So I could keep going. It takes, it, it would take me all the way to the sand and the lock at the end of the, of the port here. Let's find a nice place to give you a, an overview of this area. And then I'll be wrapping up and going back to a warm place. But you can see Parisians are out and about. In spite of the weather, there's a rumor of a third lockdown coming in the next few days. So I think everybody's enjoying Paris and being outside as much as they can as we wait to hear the news in the next few days. Fingers crossed, we'll see. Thank you to my patrons, my club members who are leaving some very kind comments about the club. Thank you for the support once again. Look at that, this is really pretty. Here, how about we walk through this before I wrap up? Let's do a romantic stroll. This is quite lovely. My fingers are seriously numb. Look, it's like we're at the Louvre. <laughs> so the access that you used to have, you know, there were stairs here on the side where you used to be able to come down for a picnic or to catch one of the boat rides. They're still here, but I think they mean people, they, they probably want people to start using the um, the other area. Let's see what's on this side. Oh, it goes back up like this. Okay. Well, I'll take you back up then. And then I'll be saying goodbye. I hope you have enjoyed this tour. The stories about the beautiful, magnificent, scary Bastille medieval fortress that was finally taken down after the French Revolution and you might say recycled, really. A fun theme to do for you if you travel around France would be to try and spot those models that they sent all around France made out of the debris in the years that followed the French Revolution. I know some of the towns are quite proud of them and take them out on July 14th to celebrate the French national holiday. So that would be a fun thing to do. And if you cannot go to France right away, you could do, you'll go see the one in Mount Vernon. So if you've enjoyed this tour, oh, this is lovely. Oh, this is pretty. Here, I'll say goodbye here, actually. 
I'm gonna do this so you can see something pretty behind me like so kind of <laughs> if you've enjoyed this tour consider leaving a tip in my virtual tip jar on PayPal that will be mentioned in the notes as well tips are gratefully accepted of course thank you so much in advance and um, I hope to see you next week uh, for a Marais tour it might be Saturday or Sunday depending on what I can do and I have something in mind and I'd like to know if it's possible to do it on Saturday so I'll see I'll keep you posted on that and in the meantime you'll find me on social media Remember, there are a lot of guided tours and replays waiting on the Friends with Vero YouTube channel. You should definitely subscribe so you find out when I post new videos, new tours. And uh, if you are a club member, this week I'll be releasing the monthly edition of uh, Vero's Musings, an audio recording which is basically a peek into my Parisian life en français, in French. So if you are a student of the French language, want to brush up on your French, that's another good reason to join Patreon actually and the club. Voilà mes amis, so let me show you a pretty thing to say goodbye. Tick. How about this? This is beautiful. You have the July column in the background where the Place de la Bastille is and the former fortress was. And we are standing right here outside the Jardin de de l'Arsenal. I know we had over 350 people, so that's amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I will be honest, I'm getting very cold and there's no cafe where I can go warm up and have hot chocolate. So I'll be heading home now <laughs> before the 6 p.m. curfew and look at your questions and see if I can answer them. So thank you for your support. Thank you for being here and I will see you very soon. A bientôt.